So let's continue our discussion on amino acids and let's focus on the properties of amino acids. Now, generally speaking, amino acids are solids at room temperature, and that's because they have very high melting points. The melting points of amino acids range between 200 and 300 degrees Celsius. The question is why? Why are amino acids solids at room temperature? Why do they have high melting points? What gives them these properties in the first place? Well, to answer this question, let's consider a reaction between the two groups that are found on our amino acids. So let's suppose we have a carboxylic acid and a primary amine. So under neutral conditions, what type of reaction will take place? Well, basically, our pKa of the carboxylic acid is much lower than that of our primary ammonium. Basically, the primary ammonium has a pKa of about 8 to 9, while the pKa of our carboxylic acid is about 4.5. And that means under neutral conditions, this carboxylic acid will act as the acid and this this will act as the base. So we have these two electrons taking away the H ion, leaving these two electrons, and so we form these two molecules that each have an equal amount but opposite charge. So we have a negative charge on the oxygen, which is delocalized among this oxygen as well, and we have the positive charge on our nitrogen. So we form the carboxylate ion and our ammonium ion. Now, these same two groups are found on every single amino acid. So let's see what type of reaction will take place on the amino acid when we place that amino acid into a neutral solution. So let's suppose we take our general amino acid, the alpha amino acid that contains some arbitrary R group. So basically notice that we have the carboxylic acid in close proximity to the primary amine. And so we have a transfer of an H atom take place. The H atom from this carboxylic acid is transferred onto the primary amine and we form this product. So we see that under the same neutral conditions, every single amino acid will basically undergo an acid-base intramolecular reaction and they will form a product that contains two opposite charges. We have a positive charge on the nitrogen and a negative charge on our oxygen. And this molecule is known as a zwitter ion. So amino acids under neutral conditions exist mostly predominantly in their zwitter ion form. Now, what exactly gives our amino acids the high melting point values? Well, if our amino acid exists in its anion and cation form because we have the two opposite charges, because it exists as a zwitter ion, we see that it is extremely polar. So it's very polar, it has a very high electric dipole moment, and that gives it the ability to form intermolecular bonds with other polar molecules and so because of this ability because it has a very high electric dipole moment because it's very polar we see that that will bump up the melting point of our amino acids in fact because of the high polarity of amino acids we see that they are highly soluble in polar solvents and not very soluble in nonpolar solvents now Let's move on to our discussion of how the pH of our solution affects the electric charge that is found on the amino acid. So, we see that the charge on the amino acid is in fact affected by the pH of our solution. So remember, pH is basically a range between 0 to 14. A low pH means we have a high concentration of hydrogen ion in our solution. A high pH means we have a low concentration of hydrogen ion in our solution. So acidic, neutral, and basic. 
So we see that in neutral conditions, as we mentioned earlier, our amino acid exists predominantly in its zwitter ion form. So we have a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on that ammonium, on that nitrogen. Now, what exactly will happen if we bring the pH to about between 1.7 to 2.6? What exactly will the charge look like on our amino acid? So, as we decrease our pH, we increase the amount of H plus ion that is found in our solution. If we have a lot of H plus ions in our solution, this neg negatively charged oxygen will basically pick up one of those H plus ions and form the following carboxylic acid group. So we see that at low pHs, we have this carboxylic group and we still have the positive charge on the nitrogen and so that means the amino acids at low pHs bear a net positive charge. Now at neutral pHs we have a negative and a positive and that cancels out so that means they're neutral. What about if we bump up our pH to about 9 to 10.6? What exactly will happen? How will that affect the charge on our amino acid? Basically if we increase the pH we decrease the concentration of H plus ions found in our solution and if we have very little H plus ions ions in our solution, we know by Le Chatelier's principle to compensate for the decrease in H+, this will dissociate, the ammonia will basically give away one of the H's to, to increase that H uh, plus concentration, and so we form this molecule here that no longer bears a positive charge. So we have a negative charge on our oxygen and no charge on this nitrogen, so the net charge is negative. So at low pH we have a positive, at neutral we have no charge, at high pH we have a negative charge. So we see that every single amino acid, if we begin at a low pH, has the ability to give off at least two H ions. So it can, get, it can basically give off this H ion and this H ion. So at some low pH, there is a pKa that corresponds to this H that will be given off and at a higher pH there is a pKa value that corresponds to our amino acid given off this H attached to our nitrogen. So each amino acid contains two pKa values. The first pKa value which basically ranges around this value describes the pKa of carboxylic acid and the second pKa describes the pKa of our ammonium group. Now, every single amino acid has a specific pH value at which it will exist uh, predominantly in this form, our zwitter ion form. And in that same pH, the concentration of our carboxylic acid will be equal to the concentration, I'm sorry, the concentration of the a uh, carboxylate ion will equal to the concentration of our ammonia and this pH point is known as the isoelectric point. So at the isoelectric point that is specific to each amino acid, that amino acid will exist predominantly in the zwitter ion form. So once again, at a certain pH, the concentration of ammonium ion is equal to the concentration of the carboxylate ion. At this point, the amino acid exists predominantly in its zwitter ion form, and this is known as the isoelectric point. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to discuss how the R group can also affect the charge on our amino acids. And we're going to discuss how we can use the isoelectric point to basically undergo a process known as electrophoresis.